Doc. Just started two Disney videos. Great job. Oh, well, thank you, boys. I was actually rather surprised about how much people really enjoyed the connections between Disney and MLP. Although there is one thing I should probably point out. And what might that be? Remember when you guys talked about the glass slipper scene from The Best Night Ever? I actually don't see Disney influence from that. Interesting. And just what does that scene remind you of then? From the way that moment is executed, it reminds me of two other animation companies that still have an influence on the animation medium today. Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera. Ah, yes. Alongside Disney, both Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera were the dominant animation giants of the world, at least for a time. Though neither of those companies hold anywhere near as much sway over the animation industry today, one cannot deny the influence they've left on cartoons over the decades. Even so, both of their comedic influences hold up well through MLP. Dare I say, even more than Disney does. Oh? You really believe that MLP has more connection to Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera than Disney? Absolutely. Take a look at the glass slipper scene again. The reference may be towards Disney's Cinderella, however the moment Rarity backtracked to smash the slipper would be something that Looney Tunes or more recently, Animaniacs would pull off. Making fun of the classic fairy tales falls more under Warner Brothers than pre-tangled Disney. Well, making fun of the classic fairy tales certainly goes back a long way. First example that comes to my mind was put together by Tex Avery after he left the Warner Brothers studios. He really brought the fairy tale parody to the forefront with the general public through his first short with MGM entitled Red Hot Riding Hood. A definite classic that has influenced a lot of fairy tale parodies ever since. That is true, although it really comes down to the timing of the jokes. The build-up being Pinkie Pie commenting on the slipper and the execution of Rarity smashing it. Warner Brothers and Tex Avery were masters of comedic timing, and you could see that influence rub off on the show. Of course, we do have some of the more obvious influences from Warner Brothers, like Pinky scene in Putting Your Hoof Down. Two bits! One bit! Two bits! Two bits! One bit! Two bits! One bit! I insist it's two bits or One bit and that's my final offer! Have it your way, one bit it is! A very direct reference to some of the old Looney Tunes shorts between Bugs and Daffy. And then you have a few of the more subtle influences, like Pinky's bouncing throughout most episodes. When I first was watching the series, I couldn't help but compare her to Pepe Le Pew. But what about the influences from Hanna-Barbera voice? Well, that you'd have to look towards Hanna-Barbera's most well-known creation, Tom and Jerry. This show made slapstick its own art form, primarily because the animators could control the impact of the physical humor frame by frame. The more it hurt, the funnier it was. And with MLP, look no further than feeling Pinky Keen. When Twilight is being pelted with cargo, you can feel the impact of each of the items hitting her on the head, from the potted plant to the piano. Yeah, I can see that. I'm sure that many of the animators at DHX have learned from the expert comedic timing of the Tom and Jerry shorts. Though I'm still a bit puzzled as to why you believe both Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera have had more influence on MLP as a whole compared to Disney. Aside from the comedy, can you think of any other connections? Well, it's actually right in front of us, and I'm surprised I'm the only one who's noticed it. Pinkie Pie is Mel Blanc. Interesting. You connect her many different personas and voice talents to the master of cartoon voices, Mel Blanc? Absolutely, Mel Blanc was more than just a voice actor. One thing Mel Blanc loved to do was entertain children. He always loved to make the kids smile and make life more worthwhile. He always made time for people when he was out in public, and he loved to do it. Even going to children's hospitals to entertain children, having a positive effect on those in specific units. If I saw a person smile, that to me was payment in itself. And, and uh, uh, if I could make them laugh when they had been very sad, it, it was great payment to me. Thanks, Jennifer, for helping us tell the story. Thank you, bud. Oh. <laughs> now, does that remind you of a certain pink poofy pony working at Sugar Cube Corner? Fascinating. I've never noticed that connection before. Even so, that's what I take away from any episode of MLP. A chance to make me smile. If the show does that, I can walk away satisfied. Something that Warner Brothers, Tex Avery, and Hanna-Barbera mastered, and honestly, brings more influence to MLP than Disney. 
Well, even though I still think there's more of a connection with Disney, I can certainly understand why Warner Brothers and Hanna-Barbera come to mind when you watch the series. But now we would like to hear from each of you. Given the influences of Disney, Warner Brothers, Hanna-Barbera, and countless other animation companies, where do you think MLP draws the most inspiration from? Are you a fan of the classic slapstick of the old Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry shorts? Do you think the MLP staff should include even more references to these cartoons in the future? We would like to hear your thoughts on these topics, and here's looking forward to the next round of cartoon comedy in MLP Season 5. And if you're interested, I recommend you check out the Mel Blanc Man of a Thousand Voices documentary on YouTube to see where the comedic influence comes from. Just make sure you have a pair of tissues on standby. I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.